Hi, I'm John Lebensold, and today we're going to be working on styling and creating the catalog page of our shopping cart that will eventually be passed on to PayPal to commit transactions. So what we're seeing right now is what we did in the last video, where we created an XML catalog, and then we used PHP to read that XML file and generate the uh, text that we're seeing right here. So we have this catalog.xml file, which if I double click, you'll see we have tomato soup and pasta as the IDs, and then we have linguine and tomato soup in our title tags, which correspond to what we're seeing over here. And in our index.php file, we're just firing off this method called get XML catalog as product. And get XML catalog is a method that we've written where if I control or command click, I'll see that basically we're just returning this new simple XML element object based on file get contents, which is a PHP function, and we're going after store XML file, which is a global variable pointing to catalog.xml. So if we go back to index.php, one of the things that I'm noticing here is that we actually have uh, no proper HTML. So first, let's actually start there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this PHP tag. So now that we have some white space here, I'm going to put in a doc type and the beginnings of an HTML file. So we have this HTML doc type. We're going to be using XHTML transitional. However, you could use HTML4 or XHTML 1.0 strict. Basically, this is just a way of telling the web browser that a person is using how to render what we're going to be seeing here. And our language is set to English US, and this is the specification for the doc type that we're going to be using. And I'm just going to close this head tag over here. Then I'm going to open a body tag, and I'm going to close the body tag, and then I'm going to close the HTML tag. And now I'm going to take this over here and just paste in our, well, our catalog into the body section of this HTML document. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a title for a wonderful shop. In this case, I'm going to call it Pasta Shop. And the last thing I want to do here is I actually want to link to a CSS file. So if I refresh the page right now, you'll notice that Pasta Shop has appeared at the top, but nothing else has really changed. So let's create a CSS file. And we're doing this so that right off the bat, we've separated our style from the markup of our page. And this is a good thing because we're going to be creating other pages and we want them all to look the same. So I'm just going to create a new CSS document. I'm going to call this main.css. Now, if this was a larger project, we could actually have multiple CSS files. Personally, I like to have a form.css where I store all of the CSS for forms. And if I've got uh, an administrative section of a page, sometimes I'll have an admin.css, and then I'll create a bit of logic to load that only if the administrator has logged into a page. But in our case, we just need a main.css file, which we're seeing right here. And I'm also going to make the beginnings of a little template here. So oftentimes, it's helpful to have some sort of wrapper around our underlying structure of our page. And the wrapper basically holds everything together. It wraps up the page so that it's not leaking out all over the place. And that's where we're going to set up our width and all that other all those other details. So back in our CSS file, I'm just going to go to wrapper and I'm going to set the width to let's say 980 pixels. We're going to add a bit of padding and a background. 
FFF is white. Now put in a nice little border of EF, 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 which is light gray. And margin zero auto will basically align it to the center of the page. And I'm going to set text align to center, so all the text will be center aligned. Now, another thing I like to do is I like to use this star character to essentially set up zeroing parameters or zero margins and zero padding for everything on my page. Now, this star character means that this is going to be applied to every single element, every single tag. And the reason why I do this is because the inter, you know, Internet Explorer will want to render margins and padding for the default paragraph tag, for example, with a certain padding and a certain margin. And then Firefox comes along and it has its own margins for padding and margins and padding for paragraph tags and so on and so forth. So this way what we're doing is we're basically setting everything up to be zero. And then we're going to go in and we're going to set it up the way we want. And this cuts down a whole chunk of CSS related issues for cross-browser support. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the font. I'm going to set it to Arial, and if you don't have Arial, then it'll default to sans serif. So now if I refresh the page, you'll see nothing's happened. So what it, what's missing is we actually have to reference our CSS file. So we're going to do that up here in the head of our document. I'm just going to say link rel equals style sheet href and we're going to go to css main.css type is equal to text css and we're going to close that and what do you know everything is center aligned looks like everything is okay. Our width is 980 pixels, but actually that seems to be quite large. So I'm going to bring that down just for this video. And I'm going to make it 680 pixels. And can't really see it right yet, but I'm going to set the background of the body of the page. And this is changing the whole body tag to be sort of a gray just so that the center of the page pops out a little more. And I'm going to set that to EEE. -E -E. There we go. So now we can see that this is our catalog. Nothing too special quite yet, but it's a start. Now the next step is going to be to put together a bit of navigation. So just like I created a div called wrapper, I'm going to create a div, and this time I'm going to set it as, or I'm going to set a class called nav, and that will serve as our navigation wrapper, or navigation div. Div is just a fancy way of saying divider. And in here, I'm going to have a couple hyperlinks. Right now, they're not going to link to anything. We're just creating the underlying structure, and we'll have one for view store. We'll have another hyperlink for view cart. And we'll have another hyperlink for clear card. I'll save that. And if I refresh it, you'll see we have view store, view card, clear card. Now, this doesn't look very inspiring quite yet, but we're getting somewhere. So now that we have our underlying structure in place, I'm going to start working on turning this get XML catalog for each list item, product, description, and title business, and we're going to make this into a three column table. And to do that, we're going to start by just creating what our table should look like, and then we're going to create the PHP version of that, which will be dynamic. And what I mean is that it'll be fed from catalog.xml. So I'm going to start with a table. I'm going to call it products and oops, 
I'm going to create a table row. And inside the table row, I'm going to want to create a table column. And then in here, I'm going to use a header to tag. And I'm going to say product title. So I'm just mocking this up right now. And we'll have a div. And we're also going to want to pull in an image. Not really sure what the the source for that image is yet. And I'm going to set the height to be 100 pixels and the width to be 80 pixels. Of course, this could all change. And then we're going to have a span tag. And then we're going to have a description. Then down here, I'm going to have price, very important. And lastly, the money maker, which will be add to cart. And add to cart. Nice. Hit save. What does this look like? Great. So we've got product title, don't really have an image yet, description, and then add to cart. So I'm going to basically take this structure and I'm going to turn this into something that's dynamically created by our for each loop over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to start by creating a variable called output and at the top of output I'm going to take these two lines which is the, tar the start of our table I'm just going to paste those in and this is the part that I want to constantly be repeated which is the table column I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to say output dot equals and what this does is it basically concatenates so it takes whatever I've already got in this variable called output and it adds whatever I write to the right of it. Now hold on a second. Because we've got product title here, we can actually just cut that out and we can pull out product title here and I can use these two dots. Basically a dot is the same way as saying like a plus in JavaScript or other programming languages. It's a way of concatenating these strings together. Now for the description, I'm going to do the same thing. In fact, we don't even need this anymore. And I'm going to do the same thing with price. Now I'm not quite sure exactly what the image tag was, so let's go back to the catalog.xml file. Ah, so we used img. So I'm just going to again do product img and I'll hit save. And now if we refresh, we don't get anything, right? Which is because basically everything is stored in this variable now. So we have to actually echo the output when we're done looping. So you'll see we get the tomato soup and the linguine graphic. Now we still need to close our table. We're getting these little X's over here and Eclipse is trying to tell us that this is not proper XHTML. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of this white space and before we echo the output I'm gonna do one last concatenation which is another table row or the closing table row tag and then the closing table tag. So now if I view the source of this page you'll see that in our table called products we actually have two columns one for tomato soup and one for linguine. And if I go to my catalog and I create another product tag, uh, let's say I call this rice or, well, we should probably stay with the whole pasta theme. So let's say I create another tag, and this time it's, it's freshly ground cumin. 
like in the first video. And I save that. When we go back, we'll end up with three columns. So it's automatically feeding this, or it's automatically creating this, from our XML file. In the next video, we're going to wrap this up, and we're going to essentially refactor the template. And we're going to move it into a templates file and sort of clean it up and make our index.php file a little nicer to look at.